the fact that this movie still blows me away 10 years later is a testament to the underlying power within it. A story about the ultimately misguided chase of perfection. A story about sacrifice. A story about a father and a son. All orchestrated under a digital symphony even Beethoven would marvel at. It's bio-digital jazz, man. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in. This is going to be a good one. This movie does not lose its stride. The second we hear that goosebump ridden line of young Jeff Bridges getting in this digital world, we step forward from the starting line and begin the sprint. Daft Punk ensures the BPM beats per minute correctly intertwines with the narrative as well as our viewing. The movie immediately establishes a dark, mysterious tone and thrusts us forward into a new generation of the Tron IP. A passing of the torch, if you will, except that torch is in another world, another world known as the grid. Before we are introduced to this computerized terrain, we are first enlightened by a high sequence that feels very much inspired by deep 80s nostalgia. Sam Flynn is now a renegade, a rebel with the cause, you could say. This heist not only reveals a large portion of Sam's character arc, but also largely develops the current state in which the world is in, or more specifically, the world our characters are in. Incom has evolved into more of a sales-hungry corporation since Flynn's vanishing. This is important to note because it represents the catalyst for every following event that occurs. Sam is clearly not happy about this, but as we soon find out, he is quite the introvert and refuses to take on the pain of his father's disappearance by stepping in. I always love the fun he has during this sequence because it seems so genuine. Now, do you know who the biggest shareholder is? I don't know, some kid. It feels like truly that this is that one night out of the year in which he gets to let loose and embrace his roots. Another interesting relationship is that of Alan and Sam. Alan seems almost like that of a father figure and you can sense his love for Sam and his real father, Kevin. This soon leads to the infamous arcade scene. I always loved the old 80s soundtrack being rebooted along with the games themselves, giving that understanding that this place has been locked down and essentially missing since 1987, coinciding with that of Kevin's disappearance. Again, this gives a very 80s nostalgic vibe with excellent song choices in Separate Worlds and Sweet Dreams, very synthy and deep tones in these as well. The continuity is extremely impressive in this movie. Our introduction to the grid is only a boost in this marathon we are running. We go from jogging in steady pace to an immediate sprint as it seems the second Sam is transported, we are in one strung out narrative that spans across the entire runtime in this setting. There are still multiple acts in between the disc battle, which is still incredible by the way, and escaping through the portal. However, the pace is never abrupted. Again, the narrative is non-stop. It feels like you are gliding across the script so eloquently that you can't stop watching. Every beat is hit, every sequence collides in a heart-wrenching race, as I like to call this story, is manifested. This movie knows what it is. It is the wackiness of its outlandish world it has created. This includes the characters, the set pieces, and the costume design. Everything is on the same page. What most induces my liking toward the crazy techno vibe of this film is that I can feel the gargantuan amount of effort that was put into it. Every creator behind this movie's fruition cared deeply about the property and the story in which they decided to tell. Every remarkable sequence, the disc battle, the light cycle, Zeus's club, everything was curated with precise attention and backed by love for this IP. Now this I can do. Before anything, I must address the soundtrack, as I, as I believe it is the string that ties everything together. I've seen a few films that have had such a coincided existence with its music, but I truly believe that this movie 
meshing that nostalgic vibe from the original does it to near perfection. I mean, it is magnificent. The tones evoke mystery, dominance, exploration of the unknown, outlandish worlds, emotion, and fun. This soundtrack seamlessly takes us on this ride with the Flynn's Clue, Korra, and Tron. Instead of going on and on about certain set pieces or costumes or characters, I want to briefly break down what I believe to be one of the greatest climaxes in an action movie in this fantasy genre. As soon as Kevin is finished knocking on the sky and their transport is overtaken by Clue, we are set forth on another heist sequence, except this time on the grid. A lot of story points come to fruition here, and I, I find myself enamored every time I begin to watch this, as I know how much emotions are about to be involved. Again, I know I stressed it a lot already, but the tracks played here drastically aid in the building of that tension. Just like that first real world heist, this mirrors that in most ways. We start slow and we build up to a unique, hopeful, kind of, you know, good side in front kind of tune. The first theme we see come into play is that of removing oneself from the equation, which was foreshadowed earlier in Flynn's Den. Korra initiates that run for the portal. Clue's speech is another forward-backward event where we visually get to see Flynn's younger embodiment shine. Going back to that first speech in which he announces his passion for changing the world, Clue mirrors that with hungry passion for the exact same thing. And in the midst of this inspiring speech, a father and son come to battle again, another dynamic that was very authentic, and Sam being infused with more eagerness than ever to get his dad back ultimately wins it. Same team. Beats per minute heightens, the sounds are more hopeful, Sam with pure determination goes for the disc and nothing will get in his way. This is that emotion, rooting from that very beginning where a little boy lost his dad. Going from living in a blur with that always in the background and now having a chance to turn the table and get that back was extremely poignant when looked at deeply. Then that fun, almost attitude shift begins. Sam obtains the disc in that moment when Kevin looks at his son achieve something so ridiculous right in front of him for one last time and was bone shaking. This leads us to the finale, which I believe did a stand up job of manifesting every planet ideal and theme in one epic finish. The critiques of this film, and uh, there, there are a lot, seem to mostly be revolving around the writing. The visuals, soundtrack, design, etc. are mostly praised. Some will knock on the Clue and Young Flynn creations, which you know, doesn't make much sense to me as, as this film was made back in 2010. Those faces look damn good for where technology was. Ultimately, however, I feel as if I'm going to plead my case to the dislikers of this film. The script is going to be where I must end this. I love the story. I'm not ashamed of that at all. I actually feel as if this story has so many flowers in a wasteland, as Flynn would put it, in the midst of its pages. Flowers in a wasteland. We're not talking Oscars here, guys, but when you leave a film and think back on a certain theme or message, the writers did their job. In this case, the conclusion leaves us in detriment, as, as a boy lost his father once again. Of course, there are many underlying themes here. Korra, the representative, Miracle, the bridge between Flynn's digital world and the world as we know it, has a big part to do with this. A spontaneously manifested soul that carried potential to unlock mysteries in science, religion, and medicine. This was his greatest discovery from the grid, and he didn't even create her. He created a clone clue to carry out his deepest desires of this digital frontier, which essentially develops into his greatest enemy, containing only his darkest traits and most premature ideals. No, no, he... He's me. I screwed it up. One of my favorite quotes from the film is when Flynn explains Clue's plan for the outside. This gives a great insight to Flynn's original motive. He knew he lived in a largely imperfect world, and he aspired to create one of his own, without the imperfections. He wanted to create the perfect system. This comes full circle in the finale when he lets all of his new gained wisdom out for Clue and essentially apologizes to his younger self. A pretty remarkable scene, especially in the context of emotion and self. 
However, the deeper underlying emotion is tied within a father and son. Massive leaps and bounds in the technology industry, potential reshaping of the human condition, a new world created, and Kevin sums it up poetically in one simple Man, line. I've given it all up for one more day with you. Despite everything, his greatest regret was missing out on his son's life. His greatest creation, the perfection he always sought, was indeed right in front of him all along. The entire time Sam spends on the grid is backed 100% by the desire to get his dad back. Every action he takes is for that one reason. He drops multiple lines talking about how he's going to get him home, and Kevin seems to always have an uncertain bearing to him. It's almost as if he knew all along that he'd have to face his past demons and Clue, and there's only one way to end it all. There's a subtle moment right after Tron makes his sacrifice and drops a magnificent line I fight for the users. in which Kevin has a look of, could this actually be over? Do I finally have a chance to go back? It makes the finale that much more gut-wrenching, especially in those final moments when a father and son have one final look at each other and Flynn reminisces. This line kills me every single time. Goodbye, kiddo. It puts the nail in the coffin, and in that brief moment, you feel that pain and suffer of losing a child not once, but twice. The return to Alan in which Sam has an opportunity to let him know he was indeed correct for having hope, and giving his father's miracle an opportunity to gaze at our world's miracle, the sun, for the first time. If Star Wars is the space opera, then Tron Legacy is the digital opera. The story, for some odd reason, plays in my mind like a Berlioz symphony. Up and down, left to right, I can watch this movie and just marvel at its beauty whilst experiencing a story that I believe, and you don't have to agree with me, is truly, truly incredible.